<laughs> Every house has straight lines. It looks so boring. I know. What if I make a building that is not straight? <laughs> Hi good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft awesome terrain for the tabletop. Today I'm going to show you how I challenged myself as a crafter and made this wonderful building. The road was anything but straight, but I'm really happy with the end result. Before we get into the video, I have a small request. If you like my content, then please consider supporting the channel by subscribing. This is a small click for you, but to me, it means a lot. Thank you. With that, let's get cracking. So this process started quite organically. I started with the base shape of the actual platform, and I wanted it to be a little bit different. I didn't really plan anything, but I cut it out on some 3mm MDF and I immediately started seeing a tunnel in this shape. So I decided to bring out my proxon and basically cut out some shapes that would signify the walls around the tunnel. Again, this was a very interesting process for me because I went quite organically, obviously with some experience of building tabletop terrain before. Needless to say, this process was a lot about dry fitting and trying things out. But I decided that I really liked having a tunnel going through the entire base of the building. And once I had that defined, it was a simple thing to just cut out a shape that would fit in the middle there, which had a nice little tunnel going through it. It was cut freehand and I'll be honest, it was a little bit scary, but it was actually quite cool to use freehand to cut the shape of this. Once I was happy with it, I decided to glue this onto the 3mm MDF base. I did cut a little bit off the corner stair just to make it flush. Now this was basically the shape and I decided to clad this with bricks. This is something I use quite often and the measurements for anyone wondering is 5 times 5 times 10 millimeters. I wanted to cut out some decorative mostly, I mean in real life they would have been functional, but in this case a little bit more decorative wooden supports coming out from the walls. Once I had them there, it was an easy thing to just glue in the rest of the bricks. And it started to look like something, you know, I could see. I needed to figure out a way to get up there and I defaulted to making stairs or at least planning to, in the future I'm going to have some stairs there. Now starting to work on the actual structure, I know that my wall height is 2 inches, so I cut out a 2 inch strip of foam core, which I then cut uh, and measured to the walls width. This I didn't know, I had to basically dry fit it and see if it worked. These protruding bricks didn't really help me out, so I decided to just make a nice flush edge. Now I had to cut some bricks and make them into a bit of an interesting shapes just so that they would fit into the corners there. Once I had them, I simply started bricking in the actual overhang of the tunnel. Looks pretty good. Now, one and a half centimeters is approximately where I start the height of my windows. I figured out that that's actually a good height for most 28 millimeter models. Here, I'm simply cutting out as many of these windows as possible. And again, this is going to get boring quite quickly, but I'm trying to dry fit. You can also see that I have on the XPS foam sort of sketched out some remote resemblance of plans. Now what I did after that was just to start hot gluing in some planks going one way 
and then these planks I hot glue the other way. The reason is I want to have a balcony there in the future because I really wanted to lean into as much as possible having interesting shapes of my building. This not only makes it interesting from a visual point of view, but it also gives it a wider application on the tabletop, I find. Once I had glued in most of the windows, I decided to go for it and glue in the walls. As you can see, I actually ended up cutting the walls apart just so I could more easily make sure that they fit nicely. And good thing was that, because I also saw that I missed some small pieces here and there. But I just glued in some small bits to compensate for my lack of measuring. For the second floor, I decided to do a quick on-the-fly plan or sketch, as you could see there. And that was mostly so I could determine where I wanted the protruding second floor to be and where I wanted it to actually stay flush with the floor underneath. Again, not planned, but sort of thought of in the heat of the moment. But I started putting in some of the beams for the second floor. And then once I had the beams there, it was quite simple to just put in the actual planking, which again, coffee stir sticks, and then snip everything off, make sure that it looks nice. And I did do plenty of tests to see that these could take weight. And it looked kind of nice. Now, using a similar technique or process that I did previously, I cut out a two inch high strip that I then measured out, cut into shape, and then glued it in bit by bit. And little by little, this floor started to show its shape. And I'm really happy with how I went about doing this. As you can notice, I'm using hot glue a lot more, and that was simply because I wanted to keep it fast and loose. And Sir Scale a lot, of course, will always be there as a help me out just to make sure that my measurements are sane. Now, just because I use hot glue, you saw there with the planking, I do like to, when I'm using wood, to, irrespective of if I'm using hot glue or not, just to fortify that construction a bit with some normal PVA or hobby glue that I then dilute with lots of water. I find that it tends to make the bond super strong and I haven't had a single breakage as of yet. Here I'm building the inside of the building and I decided to think about this from a gameplay point of view. So I added some openings that perhaps warbands in Mordheim discovered that they wanted to get into this building. And this is so that I can easily combine this building with other buildings that I have made. The good thing about making buildings the way I do with having built the actual floor or the, the ceiling height, we call it building to grid uh, in the game industry. The good thing about that is that I can put another building next to this one and I will know that the floors are approximately at the same level. So putting a temporary bridge is quite easy. Here you can see I'm starting to work on the actual stairs. And here I'm using the same technique I've used a multitude of times before, where I define a core of steps with XPS foam, which I then clad with some bricks. Now I realize that this might seem wasteful and that I could have textured these XPS foam sheets and made it look like bricks, but personally, I find individual bricks to look the best. Since these small staircases really can't fit a model, I like to have landings so that we can pretend that, okay, these two guys are now fighting. And as you saw there, I'm not always a, the smooth operator you've known. Every once in a while, I drop terrain down, but thankfully, my terrain so far seems to be quite durable. 
Here I'm starting to glue in some of the support beams for the walls and such. And this really started to me at least to make it look like a classical wattle and daub building. These timbers I glue in on all of the exterior facing corners. Now I wanted also to add some supports, not because it's needed, but simply because it looks more correct, I would say. So I added them underneath the balcony there. Now when it comes to these coffee stir sticks and the floor height, in general I like to have a horizontal coffee stir stick to represent where the floor starts. I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but to me it makes it readable how many floors a building has from the outside. And I'm always trying to think about, from a game design point of view, how we can communicate things so that players can do informed decisions as much as possible. Here I'm also thinking about Mordheim and I'm opening up even more structure here. I decided that the, the actual large roof there should have an opening for the situations I mentioned before. We might want to have a bridge that goes from one building to the other. Here the construction was pretty much done and I started using some of that sand texture gel which I try to put in between the timbers. Now this is a little bit tricky in all honesty but just make sure that you have water so that you can clean off any texture that you might put on the wood. I want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons for their support, and a special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. So thank you Agresomnia, Ekeisen27, Andreas Wienberg, Arjen Angenent, Bo Algren, Fredrik Kiersgaard Lund, Ian Patterson, Jason Chastain, Lawrence Davis, Mad Nurse, Magnus Solberg, Teddy, Leander, Marc Antoine Laramy, Niklas Söderlind, and Oliver Granlund. Now, I thought long and hard about what kind of shingles I wanted to make, and I'll, I'm going to be very honest here. I did off-camera start by using some of those shingle templates for, for XPS foam, but I'm really not a fan of the XPS foam being cut so thin anymore, and I didn't want to have to use Mod Podge to harden this up, because I know for a fact that a lot of times people tend to grab buildings by the head, so to speak, which means more often than not the actual roofs and the roof shingles. And I've had quite a good result with using my paper shingles. Again, as you can see, I pretty much soak them in white glue or hobby glue and some water, so they become quite durable once dried. Now for the top shingles, I decided to use that paper straw that I uh, found out a couple of videos ago. Worked nicely here as well. And here you can see actually the shingles have dried and I'm tapping them and there's no danger whatsoever. They're not going to break and they're flexible also, which I kind of like. Now, of course, Mordheim, there needs to be some rubble somewhere. I generally try not to go overboard with the rubble because I want this to be playable terrain. Here I'm also adding for the tunnel some dirt just to make sure that it looks more like raw ground, so to speak. And I did use some IPA alcohol there, and that I used just to make sure that the glue and water has no surface tension. As per normal, I tend to prime all of my buildings with Vallejo Black Primer, simply because that's what I have at hand. And then afterwards, I will come in with some white ink just to give it a nice zenithal spray from above. Once that has dried properly, I like to come in with some transparent burnt umber. This is something, I don't know if I was the one who made this popular or not, probably not, but to me it's always been kind of a thing where what is the most common color of dirt? Well, brown. Um, and that makes a nice sort of sub color that I can paint on. Here I'm stippling in some dark grey and I want to re-emphasize this, I'm stippling this in. I don't need to cover all of the brown bricks because it gives it a little bit more 
sense of it's been lived by by someone. Now, light gray, I actually go over everything because to me, wood and planking and all of these things look quite nice having that sort of dry brush on them. I got a while back also uh, the Mega set from Army Painter with their new Fanatic paints and I decided to use one of them for my exterior walls. I did a small test here just to see if I could wet blend these two colors and I liked it. So I went on and did the entire exterior. Now for the interior I, I thought more of well they probably want a bright color to make it look large on the inside, so I went with my classical light brown and flesh tone beige hobby paints. Now this was quite interesting. I used one uh, of my orange paints from the Army Painter for the roof shingles. Normally I would have said here I'm gonna go with uh, deep blue sea, but I wanted to try something different. And according to, uh, I'm not an expert in color theory, but when I did the math, so to speak, orange or more burnt orange was a good color, which harmonized well with the green exterior. And I think it looks pretty good, to be honest. As per normal, I'm going to use some strong tone and some military shader through the airbrush just to start griming the building down. Now, I'm not done here with one griming step, but I tend to every once in a while I want to do that just so I can get a sense of am I heading in the right direction. While that's drying, I uh, remembered that, oh yeah, the, the lead mesh of the windows needs to be painted, so I painted them up with some lead belcher. And then put them into all of the windows. Here's another product which I really love, which is this corrosion texture from AK. It really is quite nice, and it's a lot cheaper than using the equivalent version of Citadel. For the shingles and everything, I went through and gave it a little bit more of a light grey dry brushing. At this point, I decided that it was time for the Devs and Dice signature trademark thing where I add a whole bunch, probably too much, of posters to the building. Now, riser rust, I used a little bit on the actual window frames just to show a little bit of rust there. And then I went and did some nice graffiti and tags. True Blood was a new product I hadn't used before, but I have to say Army Painter nailed it with this blood effect. It looks really good. And at this point, it's time to look at the final result. I'm super happy with this building. I'm happy I challenged myself by not planning too much, but taking it one step at a time. I think for me personally, I'm going to be using the same methodology where I define a interesting shape and then we'll see what happens because it actually was quite fun to try to come up with solutions for all of the problems that I saw in front of me. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, YouTube recommends that you should be watching these. Stay safe, lots of love, and I will see you in the next video.